Good evening and welcome to Base Roundup. I am Nadun Sirivardhana and we at our television bring you a collection of business highlights. Let's have a look at the headlines. Government announces a resurgence in the export agriculture sector. Sri Lanka and Latvia hold bilateral consultations for the first time ever. Sri Lanka seeks to get Singapore's assistance to build the country's digital infrastructure. News in detail. The Secretary to the Ministry of Agriculture and Plantation Industries, BLAG Dharmakirti, highlighted a resurgence in the agriculture export sector during the first half of this year. Secretary Dharmakirti underscored the achievement during a press briefing held at the Presidential Media Centre recently. It was revealed that tea exports increased from over $407 million in April 2023 to $450 million in April 2024. The officials further revealed that there was a considerable increase in coconut, rubber, cinnamon and pepper exports in 2024 compared to the previous year. The chairman of the Coconut Development Authority, Professor Roshan Pereira, said that the Kaprukha Jayasura loan scheme has helped establish a coconut triangle in the northern province. Director of Export Agriculture RKW Ranket Kumbura said that initial steps have been taken to promote pure Sri Lankan cinnamon brand in China. He further revealed that the department has implemented development programs for 15 crops providing technical knowledge and training to farmers. Speaking at the press briefing, the chairman of Sri Lanka Tea Board Niraj Dimel said that the exports of Ceylon tea have successfully offset a substantial portion of the country's fuel bill owed to Iran amounting to 60 million US dollars Niraj Dimel highlighted that the settlement was achieved as exports of tea to Iran tripled during this period from January to May 2024 tea exports to Iran totaled 4.98 million kilograms a significant increase compared to 1.85 million kilograms exported during the same period in 2023 Since 2011, Sri Lanka has accumulated arrears of 251 million US dollars for fuel imports from Iran. To resolve the issue, an agreement was reached between Sri Lanka and Iran to settle outstanding debts through tea exports. President Ranil Wickremesinghe emphasized the critical need to enhance Sri Lanka's export economy, manufacturing, tourism, technology sectors and modern agriculture to build a robust economy. His remarks came during the inauguration ceremony of the second and third phases of the Bingiria Export Processing Zone, the largest of its kind in the country. This new facility is expected to generate significant economic activity, providing 75,000 job opportunities and an estimated export income of 2.6 billion dollars upon completion. The president toured the Dongjia factory engaged with employees and discussing future plans with officials from the board of investment the urban development authority investors and entrepreneurs the broader development plans of bingiria includes transforming iranavilla bingiria and chilau into tourist destinations with a golf course planned for iranavilla additionally there are proposals to create an it zone and modernize agriculture using the estate of the chilau plantation company President Ranil Wickremesinghe announced an ambitious program aimed at transforming Anuradhapura into a globally renowned city highlighting its rich cultural, educational, commercial and economic values. The president said this during the inauguration of a 150 kilowatt solar power system installed at the historic Jai Sri Mahabodhya premises in Anuradhapura recently. The president inaugurated the 150 kilowatt solar power system marking the first phase of LTL Holdings net zero carbon emission plan. This system meets the entire power requirement of the Sri Mahabodhya precinct marking it a net zero carbon emission zone for the first time in history. President Wickremesinghe emphasized the need to bring Anuradhapura's significance to the world stage similar to cities like Tanjore, Madras and Sanchipuram. The president said that the government continues to support initiatives at the premises housing the Jai Sri Mahabodhya and at the Atamasthana ensuring ongoing and future support. Stay tuned we will return after this commercial break.
Welcome back. Finance State Minister Ranjit Siyabalapitiya announced that a final decision on lifting the ban on vehicle imports will be made by the second week of August. The State Minister said this speaking at a Parliament session recently. The committee assigned to review this issue met on July 4th and plans to present its final report to the Cabinet by mid-August. Minister Siyabalapitiya believes that vehicle imports will be feasible without negatively affecting the country's exchange rate and will provide the needs of the people. The import order will focus first on public transport vehicles, followed by goods transport vehicles, alternative vehicles, general vehicles and finally private vehicles. Additionally, the Minister informed Parliament that the Cabinet has approved the import of 1,000 vehicles specifically for the tourism industry. The Executive Committee of the Sri Lanka Greater Mekong Business Council of the Ceylon Chamber of Commerce recently met with Sri Lanka's Ambassador-designate to Thailand, Vijayanti Edri Singha, to discuss opportunities for trade and investment collaboration across several key industry sectors. During the meeting, Ms. Vijayanti highlighted the potential for cooperation with a special focus on leveraging the opportunities presented by the Sri Lanka-Thailand Free Trade Agreement. She emphasized the potential for collaboration in agriculture and fisheries, taking advantage of Thailand's expertise to address local challenges in these fields. Educational exchanges were also highlighted, focusing on student exchange programs, joint degree programs and faculty exchanges in IT, tourism and pharmaceuticals. Prospects for joint ventures in the gem and jewellery sector, as well as healthcare services collaboration for training programs and technology exchange to elevate Sri Lankan healthcare standards were also discussed. The meeting also touched on working with Thai Airways to promote trade exhibition packages, enhance corporate sector engagement, and promote religious and cultural tourism between the two countries. Sri Lanka and Latvia held inaugural bilateral consultations between the two foreign ministries, marking the beginning of a new chapter in the diplomatic relations between the two nations in Colombo last week. The discussions focused on strengthening bilateral ties across various sectors including politics, economy, climate, information and communication technology and higher education. During the discussions, both countries expressed a strong commitment to further diversify and strengthen their trade relations. The delegations also explored avenues for cooperation at multilateral fora, aiming to enhance their collaborative efforts on the global stage. The consultations were co-chaired by the Additional Secretary of the Western Division of Sri Lanka's Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Yasoja Gunasekara, and the head of the Bilateral Relations Directorate at Latvia's Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Katarina Plater. The next session of these bilateral consultations is scheduled to take place in Riga, Latvia in 2026. Stay tuned, we will return after this commercial break. Welcome back. The Capital Market Masters Quiz Competition Series officially kicked off with its inaugural event recently in Batiklo. The inter-school quiz competition, organized by the Securities and Exchange Commission of Sri Lanka and the Colombo Stock Exchange, in collaboration aims to enhance financial literacy among students nationwide. Following the introduction of Capital Market Clubs in 100 schools in 2023, the competition seeks to engage teams from these clubs, promoting financial education and awareness. The competition is structured in two stages, provincial and national levels. The students were tested on their knowledge of current affairs, general knowledge, the Sri Lankan economy and business, IT and innovation, capital markets as well as sports and entertainment. In Batiklo, Mira Balika Vidyalaya emerged as the overall winner of the Eastern Province, while Vishaka Balika Madhya Mahavidyalaya Bandarvela was declared the overall winner of the Uwa Province. The Sri Lankan High Commissioner to Singapore, Senarab Desanayaka, met with Singapore's Communications and Information Minister, Josephine Teo, 
to discuss shared interest in the digital sphere including advancement in artificial intelligence recently. During the meeting, High Commissioner Disa Nayaka briefed Minister Tio on a recent fintech delegation visit to Sri Lanka, which aimed to explore collaborative opportunities in digital public infrastructure. Disa Nayaka expressed gratitude for the support extended by Singapore and emphasized the importance of enhancing cooperation in communication and technology between Sri Lanka and Singapore. Highlighting Singapore's regional cybersecurity efforts through the ASEAN Singapore Cybersecurity Centre of Excellence, the Sanayaka sought technical assistance for Sri Lanka. Minister Tio agreed to explore the possibilities of providing support through the ASCCE. She suggested potential collaborations with the Singapore Cyber Agency and the Infocom Media Development Authority to bolster Sri Lanka's cybersecurity and digital transformation efforts and enhance capacity building. The meeting was also attended by Yi Ling Jian from the Communications and Information Ministry's International Affairs Division and Ahmed Rasi, the Chancery Head and Minister at the Sri Lankan High Commission. The Ceylon Chamber of Commerce recently hosted a consultation mission from the Asian Development Bank to address urgent need for reforms in Sri Lanka's agriculture sector. The mission's objective is to prepare an investment project aimed at strengthening Sri Lanka's agribusiness sector through targeted investments, technical support and policy reforms. The Ceylon Chamber of Commerce said in a statement released to the media recently. The Ceylon Chamber brought together key stakeholders from the agriculture ecosystem to engage with the ADB mission. The discussions focused on the scope and implementation arrangement of the proposed project which seeks to enhance agriculture value chain financing and commercialization. The consultation centered on three crucial components for transforming the sector, expanding credit taxes for agribusiness entrepreneurs, providing advisory and financial services for business development, and identifying necessary policy reforms to support agribusiness growth. The discussions also highlighted broader development goals like the undernutrition in the entire South Asian region. With that, we wind up for today. For this and more, subscribe to our channel on YouTube and follow us on Facebook. See you tomorrow with State of Business at 7.45pm. Take care and good night.